Hi, this is Brad Linder with Linux Smartphones and the Postmarket OS Community Edition of the PinePhone, which is a smartphone designed to run Linux. And as the name suggests, this version came with Postmarket OS Community or Postmarket OS software. There are versions that ship with Ubuntu Touch, Manjaro, KDE Neon, and uh, you can try out different operating systems pretty easily because not only can you replace what's built in into the built-in EMS. EMMC storage, but you can also load different operating systems on a micro SD card and just boot straight from that very easily. Uh, one really interesting way to try a bunch of different operating systems is to use a multi-boot image. And so in this video, I wanted to show you a recent, as of uh, late November 2020, uh, multi-boot image from Meggy, who's a developer who created the pboot bootloader, uh, has done a lot of work to make the Linux kernel uh, support the hardware on this particular phone and in this case has created a multi-boot image with 17 different operating systems. Um, and before I show you what that looks like, I'm gonna show you real quick here. There's also these hardware switches that allow you to physically disconnect the modem, wireless, uh, or Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, microphone, rear camera, front camera, and headphones. They're all flipped to the on position. And the reason I wanted to tell you that is because when you boot into pboot, I can navigate using the volume keys all the way down here to the bottom, past all those operating systems, to privacy mode, press and hold, and enable privacy mode, and it'll actually disable all of that hardware without having to flip any switches, which is a kind of neat feature to have. It's a recent addition to the pboot bootloader. Um, it only affects the operating systems that are loaded from pboot on the SD card. So I also have this option to boot Postmarket OS or boot any other operating system installed to EMMC storage. But in this case, um, if I were to do that, even with privacy mode on, I would have to flip those switches. But if I had privacy mode on and I wanted to try Arch Linux or Memo Leste or Manjaro, it would disable the hardware for me. So let's take a quick look at some of these different operating systems. Um, I'm gonna start with something I haven't shown you before because if you've checked out previous videos, then you might have seen uh, the Fosh phone shell user interface on Postmarket OS or Manjaro. You might have seen the KDE Neon operating system with the uh, Plasma mobile user interface. This is Lune OS, which was actually a continuation of WebOS developed by Palm for the Palm Pre and Palm Pixie smartphones, picked up by HP when they released the HP touchpad tablet. Uh, HP canceled all of that, sold the assets off to LG, who uses it for smart TVs. But the dream is alive because the developers of LunaS are sort of continuing to port it to different devices. And here's a fairly recent build running on the Pine Phone. So you can see we've got the web browser up and running. It's a little... Stilted while it's still loading the page. But once everything's running, we can do pinch to zoom. We can take a look at that article. And then we have access to the back button up there. We also have this card-based user interface that I can swipe to dismiss. But before I do that, let's just uh, bring up a few more applications so you can see that this is something that WebOS was really kind of way ahead of their time on, I think. Uh, something that was adopted by others at a later time. And so you can sort of navigate between your different apps. You can swipe up to dismiss. It's a little bit buggy, just crashed. Uh, and it's gonna dump us back here in the beginning. And now you can see we don't have any applications up and running. Uh, another thing is, if I recall correctly, you should be able to swipe back along this bottom and that doesn't seem to work. But overall, it's kind of neat to revisit. Um, so. It's still under development. Uh, I'm not sure how active the development is, but this is a fairly recent nightly build. So let's go ahead and restart and check out a different operating system. All right, so we're back here at pboot and let's continue with our trip down memory lane and uh, or rather continuations of projects that were developed by others. And let's take a look at Memo Leste, which is a continuation of software that was originally developed by Nokia for some of their smartphones. It's a Linux-based operating system that sort of predated Nokia trying Windows and then selling their assets to Microsoft and then 
disappearing altogether. I mean, Nokia still exists, but they don't really do much with smartphones anymore. And instead, the Nokia brand now is used by a new company called HMD, which sells Android phones. But here's Mamo, uh, or Mamo Leste, which is a continuation of uh, sort of that older Linux-based user interface. Um, this particular build doesn't seem to support screen rotation, or at least not out of the box, but you can see that we've got sort of access for certain Debian apps. We've got a pretty basic user interface here, but we've got support for um, the theme engine. We've got uh, internet connections there. Terminal application. So it's a you know pretty simple uh, Linux-based user interface. Now, I've seen people who know their way around this a lot better than I do, uh, running game emulators and other software. So I think it's a fairly full-fledged Linux-based operating system, but this is just sort of scratching the surface. But let's go ahead and try something else. Just want to zip through a couple of these for you to show you what uh, Pboot allows you to do. All right, we're back at the Pboot menu. And let's try something a little different. Ubuntu Touch. So this is an operating system that was originally developed by Canonical for Linux smartphones. And Canonical tried to raise a bunch of money through crowdfunding, didn't do it, decided to just sort of wash their hands with the whole project. But a community, uh, a group of community developers formed uh, UB ports and continued developing Ubuntu Touch on their own. And so they took the Unity user interface that we named it Lomiri. They've continued developing it. It actually runs on a bunch of different phones now. And this is a port for the Pine Phone. Now, again, this is a sort of recent build available for the Pine Phone. Um, I just want to give you a quick look at it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody use this multi boot image as their primary way of interacting with the phone, but it's a neat way to sort of quickly check out a bunch of different user interfaces and operating systems. So in this case, you can see that we can unlock the device here. And so we swipe down from the top to access different sorts of settings. You can swipe from the side to get this sort of bar out here. You can keep swiping to access your list of installed applications, or you can get there quickly this way. And let's just load a couple of apps real quick here. Just to show you the UI for switching applications, which is, again, sort of this card-based user interface. You can dismiss. And let's uh, bring up a web browser. Settings application, I think, is really pretty nice. It's one of the nicer Linux-based settings apps I've seen. Um, and seems like something that really would be at home, I think, on a commercially available phone. So I'm pretty impressed with the look and feel of this. Likewise, the App Store or Software Center, the Open Store, as it's called here, is pretty nice. Sorted into different categories. Has this uh, user interface. support for things like pinch to zoom. So that's Lumiri running on Ubuntu Touch. Lumiri is, uh, has also been ported to uh, work with some other operating systems. Just trying to get the, there we go. Uh, so it's available for Manjaro and I think maybe a few other OSs as well. And um, you know, I'm gonna show you Arch Linux. This is actually gonna look pretty familiar if you've checked out some of my previous videos looking at things like PostMarket OS or Manjaro because th this version uses the Fosh phone shell user interface, actually developed by Purism for their Librem 5 smartphone, but uh, available as open source software. So it's been adopted by a bunch of other operating systems for Linux phones. So I can uh, swipe up here, unlock, and 
and you can see that we've got uh, a couple of different apps here. User interface this time gives you sort of your apps in the bottom, your task switcher on the top there. And I just want to show you real quick that most of your basic functions are working here. So we've got a camera, we've got a web browser, and so on. And the reason I wanted to show you that as quickly as I could is so that I can show you what happens when I disable them from the bootloader. And now if I enter privacy mode and load that same Arch Linux operating system with the Flash phone shell user interface, uh, you'll see that even though I didn't do anything to the uh, toggle switches in under the uh, back cover, I won't be able to access wireless, Bluetooth, camera, etc. Couldn't find the camera hardware. And let's just close that. Here, Wi Fi just doesn't turn on. Bluetooth won't turn on. If I were to load the Firefox web browser, which always takes a moment to load, it won't be able to connect to anything on the internet. Uh, so that's just a, another feature that's been built into Pboot now is the ability to disable the wireless on uh, operating systems that are booting from there. So it's trying to load. Uh, you know, it looks like it's got that, but I think that's actually just a cached page because Wi-Fi is still turned off. So let's try. Server not found. We're not online. I always forget which operating systems you have to press and hold the power button and which ones turn off this way. And while we've got the wireless disconnected, I'm going to show you one more thing. because I actually have a hard time getting this to load properly when the wireless is not disconnected. This is Sailfish OS, which is a sort of semi-open source operating system. I guess the version running here is pretty much open source, but it's developed by a company called Jala, which is uh, based in Finland. Um, and it uh, was founded by some former Nokia employees who wanted to continue the idea of developing Linux-based smartphone operating systems. It has a custom user interface. Um, it's Linux under the hood, but overall the, the user interface is a little bit different. Um, because I'm not connected to the internet, there's only so much I can show you here, but I have yet to be able to get it to fully load when I am online. So from here, I'll just sort of show you that it's uh, another one of these operating systems, I think, that has a really pretty nice, very responsive UI. Um, what apps can I open that don't require an internet connection? Got a calculator. If you switch to landscape, it says it'll go to scientific mode, but I think we have to do that manually. Or maybe it's just not going to work. This is another one with a sort of card based user interface. So you swipe from the side to access your notifications. Um, and then here you've got your list of running applications. So let's open a terminal, and now you see we've got two things running. Clock, calendar, I think it's trying to tell me how to close these things, but I guess we can rearrange them that way and exit them that way. So that's just a quick look at Sailfish. 
Again, you can see we've got all these different operating systems running off of a single micro SD card, which is just a neat way to try the different things that are available. Now, these are all sort of uh, incremental work in progress releases. Lots of things aren't necessarily working. Uh, audio doesn't work on all of them. The camera doesn't work on all of them, but it's, uh, it's a neat way to try out different things. Now you can also go to the project page for all of these different operating systems, download them and install just that OS to an SD card, which I think is a little bit more stable way to try them out. But uh, I'm still pretty impressed that the latest um, Maggie multi-boot image allows you to do as much as it does. I also keep forgetting what the password is, even though it's just a bunch of ones. So this is Brad Linder with Linux Smartphones taking a look at a handful of the operating systems that come pre-installed on Meggie's 17 OS multi-boot image for the Pine Phone. You can find more details in the, the show notes, the show notes, the uh, description of this video and at uh, linuxsmartphones.com. Um, stay tuned for more on the Pine Phone and Linux smartphones in general, or go over to Linux smartphones for the latest updates.